Hello, Francine and Ben from Meccano. Uh, we are at the Biennale of Venice and uh, at the um, Corderie of Arsenale I saw a lot of Nolly plants, aerial view of cities and uh, the theme of this uh, uh, Biennale is uh, architecture, city and society. What do you think about it? And uh, the view, the real view is uh, human eye walking, uh, talking each other and uh, uh, feeling the city and not only watching from, uh, from the outskirts. What do you think? Yeah, but that in a way you need both scales because I think the, the, the Arsenal uh, exhibition I think is more addressing to the urban planners and to the politicians. And uh, I think the good thing Ricky Bourdet did with the Arsenal exhibition is to make a kind of analyze, uh, compare cities. And, but for me it's most important uh, the conclusions he made, what is at the end of the Arsenal exhibition with the five points uh, that you have, of course there are global things, but most important to have the act local. But at the same time, uh, he made five points what are in a way politically very important to do. Uh, and I cannot uh, tell them here exactly these five points, but I think that, uh, it's a good political conclusion. And um, what I see in his exhibition uh, in, a, in a positive way is uh, to explain things to these kind of people who normally only think uh, in a in maps, what are colored in yeah, blue, this is true. Uh, green, red, yellow, uh, in a very um, um, almost uh, graphic way. So, uh, so I think what is good that he, 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 I think he made a kind of analysis by comparing these cities to see in cities, uh, hey, this the city is doing that and you're doing that, and maybe you can learn from each other. So I think it's very good that it's kind of big research, big laboratory. And, uh, but a lot of architects cannot think on that scale. So I think it's interesting that the pavilions are more, but I only saw <laughs> two or three pavilions, but especially um, also the British pavilion, and we are part of the British pavilion this time, um, although we are Dutch office. <laughs> um, there, the, uh, Jeremy Till, he's the curator, uh, he did choose one city, and it's the city of Sheffield. And he tries to deal with all scales. So he has one room, what is one to one, and one room is one to ten, and one room is one to hundred, and one to is one to thousand. Uh, I think we are in that one, and then it's one to ten thousand. So uh, he, I think, he tries to explain that a city is all the things. And, uh, and it's the population and in a lot of cities, especially in Sheffield, it's also the regeneration of a lot of uh, existing uh, 60s projects that are terrible, but a lot of people living in it. And what to do with that? So it's, uh, it's not a glamour project. Uh, it's, uh, because what I think I like about this Biennale is that I think it was the last one, what was four years ago, or two years ago, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly, Basically. two years ago. Um, yeah. I felt it was only about glamour. Absolutely. Yeah, I and mean, it was, and it was computer design. like fashion, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's everything not was that. computer yeah. designed. You could not even tell if it was coming from Hong Kong or London or whatever. And what I feel that this Biennale tries to emphasize on, that's the way I want to read it, is the, it's also the local identities. Even if the city of Sheffield, eh, they had a, just had the opening with a band of Sheffield, what for me really expresses a kind of <laughs> Sheffield feeling. I think this is the real role of the architect, to be, for example, global in mind. So you are, you are feeling like a habitant of Sheffield, for example, and uh, to try to teach to the politician what they have to do or maybe what they have to to see, to have, to keep attention. I think it's very important because yeah. these politicians, they're often there just only for four, four maybe eight years. Yeah. And often they are not 
experience, most of them. Of course, there are good examples who have the experience. And I think it's important to show them that a lot of problems he or she has in her own city are the same uh, what is happening in other cities. Yeah. And that some um, um, solutions, you can take global ones, but at the same time, you still have to act local and find your own identity. I've been traveling all over the world, lecturing all over the world. And, and the big thing about that is not only that I saw a lot of things, but it made me very much aware of, of my own identity, the identity of my own country. Uh, and uh, yeah, in a way, what is really the difference in identities? So it's, um, the, the, this, my global traveling, uh, makes it possible uh, to act very local, even in other countries. What are the, different fr the differences uh, from uh, Western architecture and Eastern architecture? What made me very we, happy... We, happy we, we are building in China a lot of, uh, I mean, Western architecture is... Yeah. is, is I'm not part of that. <laughs> No, but what I'm very happy when we'll I saw... We'll do it, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but what, 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 what made me very happy today in, the, in this Biennale was the uh, Chinese pavilion. Yeah. Uh, because at the same time you have these images, but it's also in the arsenal, and what is happening, all these towers, it's like uh, you cannot even imagine that they're really building it so quickly. It's like uh, photoshopping and then it becomes reality. But then this... Uh, beautiful pavilion in this garden with just these roof tiles and this bamboo and I didn't read about what the architect and the artist mentioned by this but for me it's uh, for me it's a symbol that they are um, destroying all these buildings with all these yeah. roof tiles yeah. <laughs> and the uh, uh, identity of China and uh, putting uh, this in a way almost American Asian uh, super cities uh, what has for me nothing to do with the human scale but um, the original aim and identity of China is in that sculpture yeah. absolutely so I felt it's yeah a and uh, I really hope that uh, it still exists yeah. Because yeah, and, uh, and I hope also that there is a, uh, of course it's now still a small generation or a small group of people who try to find other solutions of yeah, Chinese architecture. To preserve and... Con yeah, or, or find their own identity in a way. Maybe part of the identity is all these high, it's, it's also in Hong Kong, what is, but I don't know. What about material for you and your group? Uh, uh, new material or innovative material? I mean, for example, for me, it is uh, absolutely amazing that you, the using of um, copper clad in Isala College and uh, or also um, zinc, cl uh, zinc, zinc clad, cladding. Uh, zinc cladding and things like this. What do you think about this, this use of material? In a way, the, the, these materials we use are in a way rather yeah. traditional and we, st and we use them again. And, uh, um, and, and, and of course, we also uh, find, trying to find uh, in a new way, new, new way yeah. materials. In yeah. way, for me, also grass is Absolutely. a material. Yeah. Like yeah. we saw the uh, the library we made for the Technical University yeah. in Delft is in a way is a building of grass and glass. And uh, I think materials are really developing. What's quite interesting, of course, what happened in gla with glass the last decades is so. Amazing. Are your project start from? The thinking to use that kind of material, or from uh, the the shape uh, of the. Uh, yeah, it, it, it depends a little bit on the subject, but I'm very much aware of um, atmosphere uh -huh. and uh, materials, and um, maybe when 25 years ago when I started, I first was just trying to find out the right floor plan. But nowadays I'm more finding out, because these floor plans, because of my experience, yeah. I know a little bit how to deal with them. But I'm now thinking more in materials. But for me it's also important often to integrate local materials. And like we did in the Sheffield project, it's the stones that you can find 
uh, in the hills along Sheffield and I wanted to use yeah. them. Or um, in combination with stucco, white stucco, because I think uh, Sheffield is so dark or so, so I wanted to make a combination. Every city has a color for me. Yeah. Maybe Sheffield is grey. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> want to have gray. this grey. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's this, in a way this Oh, this natural grey stone, what is yeah. uh, granite, uh -huh. is it? If I combine it with stucco and a lot of grass with sheep, <laughs> uh, it becomes beautiful. And um, like uh, we did a project in Spain and we use uh, the natural stone and the building is like coming almost growing from the uh, lo local ground, from the soil. Or uh, the, the building of um, we made in Delft in Holland is uh, more like we elevated a piece of grass, so it's a building of grass. And in, uh, we also work in Albania, and there we working with a kind of metal screens for also for sun, but also to make balconies because I see people want to have a lot of flowers and plants, and they can grow the plants there. So it's I use all kind of materials. Yeah. Are uh, art and architecture sisters? or uh, the same thing and our um, uh, nature and architecture um, sister again or me, they, they, yeah. they are one against uh, the other no no i f i feel uh, first of all architecture is not autonomous you have a client and you have um, money technology everything and, uh, it's politicians. <laughs> yeah, so it, uh, you need vision. Yeah. And as an architect, you have vision. Yeah. But it's it's not an uh, autonomous piece of art. And maybe if you make somewhere a very small pavilion all alone, uh, uh, maybe here or whatever. Yeah. But so it's uh, and of course uh, is it's part of art, but it's not autonomous. And for me, architecture and nature is really for me is one. Yeah. And I think that. Uh, at the end, nature is stronger. Yeah. Because nature, for me, is touching all your senses. It's smell, it's what you hear, what you feel, um, uh, to sleep outside, or, uh, yeah, it's, it's um, and this changing of the seasons, and, and to know about the soil, and about water, and um, every country have other clouds. Even so, for me and other lights. So for me, yeah. So what do you think about the new metropolis? They don't have nature inside. Uh, it's depending. Like uh, if I compare, in instance, uh, the city of Hong Kong, what has a lot of high rise, mm -hmm. but it's a beautiful city to live because you see from all the high rise because it's on these hills. Uh, you see all the harbors and beaches, uh, so uh, that's no problem. So uh, I don't know all these new metropolis, what you, well, how it's with the area, or uh, you can have, a, like even New York, you can have a very concentrated city, but New York State is beautiful it's to go beautiful, to. Yeah. So I, I, can, I, I don't know enough about all these cities. I have to check, I have to see them. Or maybe you can take a car and go outside in the outskirts of uh, every city. There is nature, I think. Yeah. So. But I think ja it's uh, important ja that everybody in a city feels yeah. that you can go there. Even you, yeah, maybe you never true. go, but you feel that you can go there. That's most yeah, important in the city. What's about your next project? What is my next? Pro I hope my next project yeah. is the railway station in. The it's the council hall in the, with the city hall in the in our own city where the office is is in the city of Delft. But it's a competition, and we st I have we uh, it's not decided yet who it will is, win. It's done and it's not decided yet. No, we, we are wait. you doing it? Uh, no, no, we're waiting okay. for the results. Mm -hmm. So it's um, and the next project that will be finished is the is the project in Nijmegen, what we made for Philips. And that will be opened at the end of the year, I think. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful tower with pixels, with a kind of elevate on top of a kind of elevated landscape. So and nature and architecture yeah, always. together. Yeah, always. Thank you so much. Okay.
Thank you.